Yeah, uh, I love that. I love that because I believe that and I see that if you focus on the, um, on, on the scales, on the person scales, kids scales and uh, adult scales and family scales, you can have a, a better work, uh, better in terms of uh, number of sessions, but better in, in, in the world sense, you know, because you help the the people, the, the patients, the client to recognize uh, their skills and to recognize what they can do and what to do. You say that it's um, it's not a complicated and I believe that. Um, but the next question is, what is complicated in the work with kids? When you do therapy with, with kids, with um, children and adolescents too, what is, in your opinion, the most complicated thing and how can you manage that? How can you um, work with that? Do you remember when uh, we started to learn family therapy, then one of our heroes, at least many years ago, was Salvador Minucci. Mm -hmm. And Salvador Minucci was teaching that when you do family therapy, you always start with something he liked to call joining. That was his word, joining. In uh, some other therapy approaches, they call it rapport, like building rapport, they say, or just connecting with the people. And I think this is true for kids' skills too, that, it, it, that if people forget the joining part, then actually nothing works. Mm -hmm. Kids' skills doesn't work. Brief therapy doesn't work. Nothing works. You have to learn to join the family and the child and so on. So I'm teaching often, often I say, you cannot do kids skills uh, without step number zero. I had to call it step number zero because I forgot to put it into the system. So now we have step zero, additional step, preparatory step. And this preparatory step means you have to build a positive uh, relation with the child and the teacher and the family and so on. And this I have suggested that you can do in a very simple way. You simply start asking good things about the child, uh, talking about good things about the mother, maybe giving some compliments, even better making them give compliments to each other. So I designed even a game for this, you know. You take a bottle, and you know the game that teenagers play where you turn the bottle? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. then yeah. it points to you or yeah. to him. And you turn the bottle and then it points to mother. Let's say now it points to mother. Mm -hmm. And then everybody has to say something good about mother. Oh, why they beautiful. love her, why she's so lovely, why she's a good mother. Father has to say something like that. The children have to say something like that. So it takes a little while to get them going, but once then, then you turn the bottle again, and now it's pointing to the teenage daughter. Everybody has to say something nice about the teenage daughter. So it's a kind of a game that we play to prepare for the session. And if you don't do something like this, and I don't mean you have to turn the bottle, it's just an example of what you can do. So, um, so you need to do that in order for people to feel happy, uh, to feel appreciated, to feel um, respected, uh, to feel that they are loved and liked by other people. And when they start to relax, then it's possible to work with them and to start to ask them, okay, so what skill do we need to learn in order to be even happier? Yeah. And, uh, and, and if you forget that part, so then uh, you might, uh, if you go too fast, so to say, if you go too fast. But this is a principle that we already learned many, many years ago from Salvador Minucci, from Milton Erickson. I'm sure we learned it from all the great names in our field if we pay attention yeah yeah we know that the relationship in general another way to, to call it it's the most important thing in every uh, we could say in every therapy but we could say almost in every job probably in, yes. in, in every interaction in every interaction with, with people mm -hmm. okay okay and if you have um how to say um, um 
an, an opposite, uh, opposite, um, a positive, a positive kid, or an a positive uh, parent, uh, or a positive teacher. Um, how, how can you manage that? And I think you mean like oppositional. Oppositional, yeah. Opposition, like when they are like, I don't want to you yeah. know, talk with you. I don't you. want to be there. This is the bullshit. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, why did we have to come here? And, you know. Yeah, exactly. How can yes. you manage that? I think uh, this is important because sometimes people are coming to see us and they don't even want to come to yeah. see you. So this is part of joining too. So it's like... Like I, I, one of my questions that I I like to ask is that have you been in this kind of meetings before, mm. or have you met a psychologist or a psychiatrist like me before? Have you been here at the school uh, in a meeting before? Have the, have you been talking to the social worker before? So I like to kind of analyze with them what experiences they've had before to find out if they have had negative experience. Mm. It kind of makes sense. So then I say, oh, okay, I understand that you, do, you didn't really like to come because you have had bad experiences before or you didn't like the last time you were there. So I hope this will be better for you this time. I'm kind of trying to convince them that maybe this is different. Maybe talking to me will be a little bit different than the previous time you talked with somebody else. I, sometimes I even say, we are still learning this profession and we are not always capable of, you know, doing good sessions, but I hope this one will be good for you. And you can teach us to make it better for you. So we are learning from you, kind of changing the ball game because so many people have experienced unpleasant experts. Experts yeah. can be quite unpleasant. And uh, some people who have been to school because there had been some problems with, with their child in the school have actually had like, I'm, if I'm not exaggerating, traumatic experiences mm -hmm. when they have been talking to professionals. So our job is to kind of make them feel that this may be actually different from what you experienced before. And even that feeling that this might be different, you can perhaps do something of to prevent it, you can say, welcome in a warm, nice way. You can say something like, we are learning, we are developing our ways of working. Maybe you can help us to improve our, our methods. And then, of course, I always start with what would be a good result for you. The solution-focused people have uh, developed an art. Mm -hmm. It's almost like an art form. Yeah where you always go to the people and say, what would be a good result for you? Yeah. If they say, uh, we did, I didn't like, uh, I have been here before, it was bullshit, why do I have to come here, then this is, this is idiotic, then you say, okay, I, I understand, you have had uh, not so good experiences before, but suppose this was somehow, somehow this session that we have will be good for you. What would be a good outcome for you? What would be a good result for you? The, the more they feel that we are really genuinely interested yeah. in what would be good for you, I'm sure it takes a little while before they, before they become convinced that you are truly on their side. But when they start to feel that you are truly on my side, I don't think every, anybody will be negative. People will be very willing to talk with you if they have the feeling that you are on their side, that their best interest is, is important to you, their negative previous experiences, you are interested to hear about that, and they feel that you genuinely want to make it a good experience for them. So, my long, it was a long answer to a good, uh, good question, but, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a question of um, respect. Yeah. If you if we respect people, they will want to work with us. 